So it seems I took my vacation in the same week where lots of things happen in the maker scene. We've got SBCs, SBCs, I think more SBCs. So first up on Kickstarter, there is of course the usual bucket load of spinners. But this next one will interest one of my subs. It's a board that controls a 6 off Stuart motion platform. Has all the IMU and motor controllers on board, so all you need is a Stuart platform, which is actually the expensive bit. It's a fairly complete campaign that seems to have been around for at least a year now, with this being the updated version. Back in weekly roundup number 31, I found the Micro Duino, which is a tiny Atmega 32U4, measuring 12mm squared. Here's another one on Kickstarter called the Arduino Pico, which comes in at a whopping 15mm squared. If you're in need of a bucket load of GPIOs, the EIEIO campaign is for a board that pushes out 261 GPIOs, often at Mega 32U4, and two GPIO expanders. However, it's only in prototype stage. This next campaign gives you 16 relay controlled 12 volt outputs, all controlled from your Pi has a standard ATX style connector providing the 12 volt input and also providing 5 volt power to the Pi. Sometimes ideas are so obvious that people ignore them. The amazing shortcut keyboard is one of those ideas. It's a small keyboard with each key being programmatically controlled to perform a certain function. For example, open your favourite application or you can move the mouse to a certain position and click. It comes in kit form but the creator has gone to great lengths to make it pretty easy to get started and looks to be one of the better thought out campaigns. Here's another breadboard add-on. This one contains a P8X32A chip and a 3.3 or 5 volt mini power supply. This chip comes from Parallax Incorporated and is a 32-bit MCU with some fancy stuff on it like video interfaces, sensor integration, signal processing and funky things like enhanced assembly language that gives you conditional execution for individual instructions allowing jitter-free signal generation. The buzz box is a beehive sensor that contains what looks like an ESP and a bunch of sensors. It claims to be able to detect and track bee states such as empty, collapsed, active, normal, pre-swarm, swarm and missing queen. Hats off to any subs who know what I just said then. If you do, you're a keeper. Laura Kitty Cat is another ESP8266 board that also contains a LoRa module and three Grove ports. Of course comes with OTA programming and they have made an Android app that you can use to create mobile apps. It's also compatible with a bunch of LoRa networks. And we have another SPC on Kickstarter. Most of the SPC manufacturers have now admitted defeat and are using the Raspberry Pi as a standard. So here we have the Libra computer board in a very familiar format, but running the AM Logic S905X SOC. Everything is identical to the Pi except for the 2 gigs of RAM and an optional 64 gigs eMMC and active cooling. It claims to be twice as fast as a Pi 3, but once I get my hands on it, I'll see how it actually performs. In the late 80s, I made a talking alarm clock that I've wanted to bring into this millennia. My patrons voted this as being this month's project, which is nice. But good timing as this next campaign is exactly what I had in mind. It's an Alexa-enabled alarm clock that you can tell it to wake you up at a specific time in the morning, play music, inadvertently order something expensive on Amazon, and a whole lot of other cool things. Over at Indiegogo, there's a few fidget spinners, of course. But more interestingly, there's the Tiny LiDAR, which is a small board based off the VL53LOX ranging sensor, and an Atmega CPU providing all the grunt work. So all you have to do is speak a couple of I2C commands and you're up and running. Has onboard logic level converters and can drop down to a 10 microamp queers and current when idle. Can sample at 60 hertz at up to two meters using a low end MCU like an Arduino Uno. Crowd Supply has a few interesting things in pre-launch. The Hardy Patch is a health monitor aimed at the sports industry. Contains an ESP32 Max3003 ECG chip temperature sensor, 3 DOF IMU and LiPo charging. You can also check out the project page on Hackaday. This next one is a vision processing board based on an FPGA allowing you to process a 1080p 60Hz video stream. They have released it all as open source hardware so it will be interesting to see how this goes. Back in weekly roundup number 31 we saw the Crazy Circuits Kickstarter. Well now it's on crowd supply in pre-launch status. 
And back in weekly roundup number 33, the Hisarian Core 2 was in pre-launch. Well now, it's launched. Designed specifically for DIY robots and has onboard ESP32, STM32, 4 DC motor H bridges with quad encoding, 7 servo drivers and a bunch of GPIOs. Hackaday has a few fidget spinners. What is it with these fidget spinners? The Connect Core Pro from Digi is a fairly pricey SBC at almost $200 US, but runs the MX6 Ultra Light SOC with 256 megs DDR3 RAM, 256 megs NAND flash, optional 4 gigs EMMC, SD slot, and 100 megabit Ethernet. Dual band Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, a PCIe key for other wireless devices, and bucket loads of GPIO options. Runs off a 5 volt 300 milliamp DC supply. The Orange Pi guys are back with another board. This time it's a fully compliant 96 board style SBC. It's very similar to the Orange Pi IoT, but minus the 2G module. Contains the RDA Micro 8810 Cortex A5, 256 megabytes RAM, 512 megabyte NAND flash, SD slot, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, and USB OTG. Interestingly, the Orange Pi store on AliExpress has this board marked as no longer available. So that must be the shortest production run ever. However, Friendly Elec have updated their Nano Pi Neo Plus. Not only does the name have a 2 in it, but it has 1 gig RAM, 8 gig eMMC, Wi-Fi Bluetooth, and an additional USB port. The wireless module used is a very common AP6212, so there won't be any issues with drivers. Another SPC based on the MX6 Ultralight SOC. This one comes as a SOM with 512 megs RAM and 2 gigs eMMC, and can be plugged into this board that provides 100 megabit Ethernet, SD slot, USB 2.0, and three 40 pin headers for GPIOs. Microsoft seems to be cool again and have released an internet based Pi 3 simulator that connects to the Azure IoT hub. Nice! It's only in preview status, but they've gone against their old mantra and actually released all the source code on GitHub. Even better! And the BSD guys have been beavering away porting NetBSD to the Allwinner H3 SOC. This is a really good move, as we might see projects like FreeNAS working on ARM-based SOCs in future. Sapphire Tech have an AMD-based SBC selling for around $89. US This is one beefy board as it contains the desktop LX210KL desktop CPU, with two DDR3 SODIMM RAM slots, dual HDMI, MSATA, USB 3.0 and USB 2.0 ports, RTC and Gigabit Ethernet. Runs off a 19 volt 3.4 amp DC supply, so is a bit of a power hog. There's a bunch of boards available running the cheap Allwinner H3 SOC, but none of the manufacturers could get Android to really work on this SOC properly. A few developers got together and decided to change this. Their hard work is now called H3 Droid, and it seems to run a whole lot better. I'll be trying out H3 Droid in future review videos, so stay tuned. Unusually, over at Tindy there seems to be even more spinners. But more interestingly, there's a really tiny and cheap FPGA board. Nice if you want to get into FPGAs. There's this one running the Lattice Mark X02 256 FPGA with 256 4 input lookups and pushes out 18 GPIOs with hardware based ITC and SPI. There's also this one which has 1200 lookups and additional PLL. We saw the Hornbill back in weekly roundup number 21 and has now left crowdfunding sites and is on Tindy. It's based on the ESP32 and has onboard temperature sensor and LiPo charger. The Bluey is another NRF52832 based board that also provides an SD slot, temperature, light and accelerometer sensors, and a CP2104 USB chip. Runs off either USB or 6 volt battery. The good thing about this is that it's released as fully open hardware. And if you need to do some GDB based debugging on the NRF52, then you can use this cheap SWD board. And if you're into 3D scanning, then this cheap board will use a Pi and a Pololu stepper driver to achieve that. No indication on scanning resolution, but a quick check on the website shows that it supports up to almost 18 samples per degree. The Snap VCC was also in a previous Kickstarter, but is now on Tindy. It's a very simple board that provides you with a regulated 3.3 or 5 volt output from a 9 volt battery. And here's a couple of boards from the one store owner. This one allowing you to power your Pi from a 2 to 16 volt supply, or this one giving you a battery pack add-on for an Arduino. 
which you can query the battery state from the Atmega. This is a pretty decent LoRa hat for the Pi Zero running the microchip RN2903 LoRa module with a mini prototyping area and access to 8 GPIOs from the module. The ATX Mega series of MCUs is a step up from the current run of MCUs. They support features such as X Mega Custom Logic, which works in a similar way to an FPGA, hardware CRCs, analog comparators, and power management. This board is a breakout for the ATX Mega 32E5. Nice. There's also this salinity sensor, which is a custom job made out of a small MCU, temperature probe, and electrodes, calculating soil sanity for you. Here's another moisture sensor working off I2C. Runs off 3 or 5 volts using 4.5 milliamps while active. Now I just noticed this guy has been on Tindy since 2012 and fulfilled almost 2,000 orders. Nice! Now this is pretty cool. Adafruit have a breakout for the AMG 8833 IR thermal camera, which gives you an 8x8 pixel resolution, 10Hz frame rate video. Runs off a 3 or 5 volt supply. And over at SparkFun they have a blast from the past. This is really cool. It's an electronics project kit that you can create 130 different projects with. Man, I love this when I got one of these for Christmas. Except this one has a quad NAND gate and dual op amp ICs. DF Robot have a cheap 315 MHz RF receiver module. These are used in short range remote controls like garage door openers and RC toys. Runs off a 3.3 or 5 volt supply. They also have this Realtek RTL8195 module which contains a Cortex M3, Wi-Fi and integrated Ethernet and NFC. A nice module if you want to make a door lock. Pololo have a stepper motor controller running the DRV8825 driver IC which can control one stepper motor from 8 to 45 volts and syncing up to 2.5 amps. It's accessible over I2C, UART and USB. So that's about it for this week's roundup. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to run through all the China-based shops, but we'll do that more extensively next time. As always, check my website for links to all these products. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.